look forward to this conversation, Rajiv. It's always a pleasure speaking to visionaries like yourself. And you know, leading from that poll, uh, the, the obvious question is why furniture, right? So like renting and subscription businesses globally uh, are, are a big thing now. In fact, I do uh, recall uh, an, an observation that you made in some other uh, chat forum wherein you, you indicated um, that uh, the last decade has been a decade of uh, e-commerce and this decade, uh, which is more relevant to us now, would be a decade of a subscription-led business model. So we'd love okay. to hear your thoughts on what exactly is the, is the thought process there and why furniture when there are like so many other uh, asset classes on which uh, the subscription-led model could have worked equally uh, well. Right. Um, so, you know, there is an intelligent answer where I look very intelligent in the, with the audience and there is serendipity as well. So I'll first go with the serendipity and the truth of it. Uh, no, I did not fully think through it uh, when I jumped into furniture. Uh, it was more of a, you know, serendipitous evolution, I would say. Uh, I, and I was in the US, came back, I was working with Goldman Sachs, uh, then happened to, uh, you know, move all my, you know, sell all my furniture in the US, come here into India, buy all of them. Uh, and the first move itself, things started breaking. Um, and that's when, you know, this idea cropped up, saying that, you know, why, when in your early phases of your life, you know, whether you're a bachelor, just about married and probably having your first kid, not really settled in life, which is the case, by the way, from age 22 to at least age 35 in the modern, not just India, modern world. You know, people are not like coming out of college and then, you know, buying a house and settling down. People are, people want to explore the world. So that's what I call as age 22 to age 35. And, um, and during that phase, um, furniture specifically is not an asset. It is a liability for you because first thing you can't afford it because it's very expensive as, uh, you know, the, uh, the earlier you are in your life, the more expensive it sounds. Um, second, um, what are you going to do when you have, when you actually need to move? And as I just described during that early phases, we move a lot. There's changes are constant at that time due to those phases of life. So, um, you know, you buy a sofa worth whatever, 50,000 rupees. I'm, I'm going to use rupees. I mean, please translate into the respective countries, dollars or whatever. Um, if you buy a 50,000 rupees sofa, uh, or a thousand dollar sofa, let's say, um, first thing you wouldn't feel like spending that thousand dollars. Second, um, you know, the two years down the line, you're writing a GMAT and, and flying abroad. What are you going to do with that sofa? Uh, if you try selling it in the seconds market, uh, which almost is non-existent, um, you will get nothing out of it. And that's exactly what happened to me when I sold all my furniture in the U S I sold it on Craigslist, got nothing. I had about five, $6,000 worth of furniture. And I sold it for like $500 peanuts basically, because my flight was on a Friday. I'm trying to sell it on a month, the, the previous Monday. I just had like five days to get rid of all my furniture. So what are you going to get? So selling of seconds furniture, remember, it's always a distress sale, right? A distress sale will never get you money. And hence, if you're trying to make a money out of the, of by exiting out of furniture, and I'm talking financials here, you're not going to make it. That's not true, by the way, with asset, other asset classes, cars, uh, vehicles, which has what do you call this Kelly Blue Book value. So there's a RV, residual value of the fund of the asset. So and there is a you know, market out there where you can actually sell your uh, car and get some money out of it. That's not true with furniture. So um, which which by the way are all negatives for me not to get into this particular business. But then that's the opportunity, right? I mean, you walk into a village where there are no shoes. Do you walk away saying that there's no demand? Or do you say that, oh, you know, let me produce shoes. So I just decided to produce the shoes in this case, you know, making furniture or renting furniture per se. So uh, practically when we entered uh, India, there was there were, there were zero brands. Of course, we are the first brand in India to create rental furniture. Um, second, the concept of rental furniture never was there. Um, India, I mean, the answer, direct answer given to me was uh, Indians will not rent. There is no chance. Uh, it, it's all so furniture is meant to be bought. And I have been questioning that uh, thing that why do you think it needs to be bought? Uh, why can't a subscription be an answer for that? Um, I'll just explain the rental and subscription. It's very synonymously used, but they're not exactly the same. But let's go with rental for now. now there is there's absolute, absolute clear definition of both of those. But, you know, starting with this easier word, which is rental, uh, pe people didn't subscribe to it. Uh, when I just bounced it off, 
uh, the idea to be people will you rent furniture people are like yeah maybe you know for a week 10 days uh, I mean, even in your audience you know one third of them who said they've rented i'm not sure how long would they have uh, rented it for so renting is seen as a transient phase that you come in and go out um, can a business be made out of that absolutely we have made a business out of that uh, but Furlinko has not been created with that idea. Furlinko is not trying to be a transient solution for you uh, for a short period of time. It does do that business. It does to, uh, create that uh, value, of course. But we exist because we want to change access to furniture into subscription. And that is where I'm going to separate the word subscription. So what is rental? What is subscription? Rental is, as I just said, it's for transient use. You you rent a product because you know that you don't want to buy it, so you're going to rent, use it for some time and give it away. That's the that's the let's say the definition of renting. Subscription is a way of life. You were renting a DVD or a video cassette, depending upon which decade you were born, uh, from the shops. Uh, but today you don't rent it. You actually have subscribed to Netflix, the same company which is giving you the rental DVD is now subscribing to a whole content. We are trying to do something similar here with furniture. I want furniture access. Of course, it cannot, furniture cannot turn digital overnight. But then the idea is that why do you need to buy? Why can't you just, why can't you just pay one amount and take all the furniture that you need? And then moving on with your phase, you know, you may be a bachelor, you may just need a couple of items. Once you get married, probably you need more items. Once you have a three bedroom hall kitchen, you have a lot of items. So depending upon which phase you are, you can keep upgrading yourself and uh, use this as a way of life. So um, Falinko has that as a mission. We existed as a rental company for the first five years or so. Um, you know, as we got funded, uh, you know, we got a little bit bolder. And last year, we actually, you know, kind of did a small split in the company where we said rental is fine. It's going to have X number of customers. We will start subscription as well, which is what we call as unlimited by Furlingo. And there we have, you know, you know, it, it's a buffet model of Furlingo where we are saying that, look, you just press a button, pay, you know, here in Indian rupees, 6,000 rupees per month annualized, you get 72,000 rupees. You get your entire three bedroom hall kitchen furnished. I'm talking about sofa set, dining tables, beds, mattresses, wardrobes, TV, refrigerator, washing machine, everything for just 6,000 rupees per month. It beats any credit system by at least, you know, by one third, you know, so that it's, it's, it's actually that cheap. So it's a great value proposition for people to latch on to it. And of course, we are already making money uh, from that front. So I'm just going to pause there, Manmohan. I just want to give you an introduction of it. You know, with more questions, I'll, I'll dive deeper into any of those aspects. No, absolutely, Ajit. I think that's a very, very powerful vision that you laid out. And I'm sure uh, in the last uh, uh, decade or so, uh, you've seen the success at your own shop in terms of you know how the, the mindset has changed, how the acceptability has uh, improved. And again, as you very rightly quoted that, you know, when you walk into a place where you don't see something, doesn't mean that the demand is not there. It's just that nobody actually made the effort to offer it in a convenient manner, actually. Right, so that's exactly. super, super powerful and look forward to this uh, uh, continuing journey. Uh, if I can just also uh, uh, request you to expand a little bit in terms of why you strongly believe that this decade is going to be a subscription slash renting uh, business decade. Uh, it would be, be great for our audience to point out, you know, hear from you on that. Yeah, so um, I'm of the belief that when you're buying into a product, you're basically saying that there's not going to be any improvement on that particular product for a long period of time. Of course, you can't debate uh, things like uh, groceries and you know, any consumption thing. Uh, you can't debate that you, know, you have to buy it. Or maybe you know, there the word subscription comes a little bit different. Do you want a coffee every day that so you subscribe to it? That's a different you know, interpretation of subscription. But if you look at subscription as uh, subsidizing uh, the cost of a product, uh, then it becomes a little bit different. What I mean by that is in a subscription-based economy, the customer does not pay the full price of the product on day one. And it is actually a great advantage to the customer. You know, you, 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 when you walk out of a, a car dealership or when you walk out of a furniture shop, I'm talking about selling uh, shops, um, the moment you walk out of the, the door, uh, 
the deal is done right and there is no other than the warranties given by the respective companies there's not much you can do about um, you know what happens to that particular product after a few years it's your problem it's it's your bought it you are the owner you are the title owner of it right um, but what happens with subscription is that one you are not paying the full price of it second the company which has offered you the subscription is on the hook to provide not only the quality of product that they need to give you but also the service around that particular product more and more as we go along product and service come together for example furniture it's not just the furniture comes to your house what are you going to do about cleaning that sofa where you spilt wine after 6 months or 1 year who does that you got to spend it and it costs money by the way you spend it but when you bundle it with subscription that comes as part of it or what happens to the fact that after 1 year you actually have to move houses and you have to move cities um here in india people move from gurgaon to back to bangalore so what are you going to do to for the same exact sofa that you bought you have to push it onto a truck the truck is going to ship it to bangalore fine but that's going to be as equal to the the price that you paid for the sofa so if you had bought it these are all the services that we bundle into subscription right uh, cleaning services relocation services these are services that we put in plus you don't pay the full price of it so we as a company we are always on the hook to provide you with the best of quality of service so that because the moment it is going bad you're going to return back the furniture and i'm going to lose the revenue so it's it's a great win win for the customer now so how is it a win win for the company well that's even better for the company because what happens in a buying selling sorry selling company um you know covid hits there is a lockdown right if you don't sell you don't get revenue for a selling company then what happens to all the fixed costs in that particular company it becomes a huge problem you know in our company for linko that did not happen because we have x number of active subscriber base already renting from you they continue to pay you rent over the period of time so even if comes uh can you hear me aman mohan i'm having getting some messages here yes can hear i think there was a quick pause sorry can you hear me now yes sorry i just had some technical difficulty i'm just moving to my laptop there so um uh, when it comes to subscription and company you exactly know how many subscribers are there last month and they are going to be paying you rent this month which means you can start aligning the expenses of the company around the revenue that you've already got which means getting to free cash getting to profitability can be a lot more far sighted and perfected because you know that you're sitting on what we call as an order book you know x million dollars worth of uh, future revenue is going to come then you know that you should not be spending more than y amount of cost to get profitability that's exactly uh, what happens in a subscription company so that's why i say that if last decade was the decade of e-commerce this decade is going to be a decade of subscription because subscription not only helps customer it helps the company as well to to create a great economy absolutely i couldn't agree more with that ajit and uh, and more and more as you uh, mentioned uh, palenko is an example netflix is again a classic example as well wherein subscription has done wonders for both consumers as well as uh, the providers as well so uh, now look forward to continuing success uh, at your end